Hey, hey. Here. Okay. Watch out. Set. Sold. On. The Kerbal Space Program. The pinnacle of Kerbin's technological advancements. The well-known and well-respected organization discovering the wonders of the Kerbal system and engineering and scientific betterments for all Kerbal kind. And so today, they are utilizing complex shuttlecraft to construct orbital space stations and so much more. And yet, so many of these advancements are due to the hard work and determination of four pioneering Kerbonauts. These are the stories of the brave explorers who dared to travel faster and higher than those who preceded them. The trailblazers, the first ones to leave the confines of Kerbin's atmosphere, the first ones to orbit the planet, and yes, even the first ones to set foot on another celestial body. The Kerbals who would defy the Kraken and touch the Mun. Officially, the program knew them as Kerbalnaut Group One, but most of Kerbin knows them better as the Moho Four. They are the original four. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing Kerbals on the Mun and returning them safely to cabin. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to Kerbal kind or more important for the long range exploration of space and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. We propose to accelerate the development of the appropriate minor spacecraft. There is no strife, no prejudice, no national conflict in outer space as yet. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all Kerbal kind and its opportunity for peaceful cooperation may never come again. But why, some say, the Mun? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly across the sea? We choose to go to the Mun. We choose to go to the Mun. We choose to go to the Mun in this decade and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of all energies and skills. As Kerbal Kind prepares to return to the Mun, one must remember the first missions there, the hard work and dedication by the original crews. Four Kerbals stand out as the forerunners to all modern spaceflight. They are Jebediah, Bill, Bob, and Valentina Kerman. All of them being instrumental in Project Moho would soon thereafter help usher in the Kerbal Project and travel further than any Kerbal ever before. These four would be the first Kerbals to go to the Mun. The Kerbal Project would be an extremely ambitious undertaking. New technologies, new procedures, and new spacecraft would need to be developed. Project Moho demonstrated how to achieve orbit. Project Twins helped the Kerbals learn how to perform extravehicular activities and how to rendezvous two spacecraft while in orbit. But now, the Kerbal Project would need to combine all of these lessons and more to safely take Kerbals to the Mun and bring them back to Kerbin. For Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Val, this meant testing new crafts and techniques with the Mun Landing Research Vehicle. The Mun only has a surface gravity of 1.63 meters per second squared compared to the 9.81 meters per second squared of Kerbin. This difference necessitated a special vehicle to practice and test Mun landing techniques while still on Kerbin. It was important to fix any mistakes while still on Kerbin before they headed to the Mun. After many years of hard work and preparation, the first mission to the Mun finally takes flight. This is to be the first time a crewed spacecraft leaves low Kerbin orbit and makes its way to the orbit of the Mun. On board are Jebediah, Bill, and Valentina Kerman. These will be the first Kerbals to ever see the far side of the Mun and to witness a Kerbin rise. The mission does not include a lander but it would seem that the goals are ambitious enough.
Everything at this point is proceeding as planned for the Kerbal 8 mission, but the journey to this point has been difficult. Kerbal 1 had a fire on the launch pad, and Kerbal 6 encountered multiple major problems during its flight, including three engine failures and pogo oscillations. All of these issues required redesigns of the Sarnus 5 launch vehicle and the Mark 3-1 command pod. Testing of all the components on Kerbal 8 continued all the way to the launch pad, with the final test completed just a few days before the scheduled launch date. The Rhino engine once more ignites itself at the proper time, and the crew perform their transmunner injection burn perfectly. Over the course of the burn, the spacecraft increases its velocity by 840 meters per second. After the last stage of the Sarnus 5 places the command and service module on course for the MUN, it is decoupled. The crew then use this opportunity to take some pictures of it. About one day into the mission, the crew entered into the MUN sphere of influence. Then, around an hour later, they ignited the engine to place the spacecraft in orbit around the MUN. The crew described the burn as the longest 30 seconds of their lives. After reporting to the KSC about the status of the ship, Valentina began describing the MUN. The MUN is essentially gray, no color, looks like plaster or a sort of grayish beach sand. We can see quite a bit of detail. The lowlands don't stand out as well here as it does on Kerbin. There's not as much contrast between them and the surrounding craters. The craters are all rounded off. There's quite a few of them. Some of them are newer. Many of them look like, especially the rounded ones, look like hit by meteorites or projectiles of some sort. The eastern crater is quite a huge crater. It's got a central cone to it. The walls of the crater are terraced, about six or seven different terraces all the way down. As the crew came around the MUN, they saw the Kerbin rise and took the very first color photographs of it. After conducting many observations of the surface of the MUN, it was time for the crew to return back to Kerbin. Their photographs and description of the MUN surface would be useful for subsequent missions that would land on the surface of the MUN. Once back on Kerbin, they would be named Kerbals of the Year. Obviously, this is quite an honor. However, there was still much more left to be accomplished. There is still the goal of landing on the surface of the MUN and returning back to Kerbin. For this, Jebediah, Bob, and Valentina would once more return into space on the Sarnus 5 rocket. This time on the famed Kerbal 11 mission. It is finally time to achieve the goals as laid out by the late President John Fitzgerald Kerman. As this mission was going to be for posterity, it was decided that the crew should not be so flippant in the naming of their command module and lander. For this mission, it was decided that the crew should not be so flippant in the naming of their spacecraft. Originally, the command module was named Snow Cone and the lander Haystack. However, it was decided that the lander should be named Eagle and the command module was named Columbia. Unlike the Kerbal 8 mission, the Kerbal 11 mission includes a lander, but the lander is stored below the service module. so. After decoupling from the upper stage of the Sarnus 5 rocket, the crew must flip the command module around and then line up and dock with the lander. As the pilot of the command module, this is Valentina's task. Unsurprisingly, it is performed perfectly. As the command module flew behind the MUN, it would fire its engines to enter into a stable MUN orbit. Thanks to the work done during the Kabul 8 mission, a level landing site was discovered in the Midlands. This then will be where Bob and Jebediah attempt to land. During the descent, different alarms began going off in the lander. The computer was in task overload, but the staff back at the Kerbal Space Center tell them it is safe to proceed. It ended up 
that the alarms were caused in air due to a software issue when leaving the rendezvous radar on. Jebediah and Bob also realized they were coming in a little faster than they had expected. Whether this was caused by the undocking maneuver or some unusual interactions between the gravity of the Mun and Kerbin, it's not exactly known, but Jebediah is definitely on it and making sure the craft is going to land safely. After decelerating for several minutes, the craft is now over the landing site and Jebediah begins to carefully maneuver the lander so that it will touch down safely onto the surface of the Mun. Just a few meters left, the craft is descending slowly, and contact! Engine arm is off, KSE, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. That's one small step for Kerbal. One giant leap for Kerbal Kind. What magnificent desolation. So it turns out that Bob has snuck a golf iron with him on this mission and has decided to do the very scientific test of hitting a golf ball on the Mun. Bob said that his golf ball went many, many kilometers. However, after more recent analysis of the video footage, they only went a few meters. After a couple hours on the surface, and collecting about 50 kilograms of samples, it's time to return back to the command module. Bob radios back. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask every person listening in, whoever and wherever they may be, to pause for a moment and contemplate the events of the past few hours and give thanks in his or her own way. After raising the lander's apoapsis to a safe distance, Jeb begins plotting his rendezvous burn. This is where all the practice and the trial and error of the twins mission has come in. The lander must successfully redock with the command module in order for all the crew to safely return back to Kerbin. And it looks like Jebediah has learned his lessons on orbital mechanics, as the two spacecrafts will pass very close, within less than half a kilometer of each other. With the two spacecraft now less than one kilometer apart, Jebediah begins making the final correction burns in order for the two to meet up. Before Bob and Jeb left the Mun's surface, they uncovered a plaque that had been mounted on the MEMS ladder. It read, Here Kerbals, from the planet Kerbin, first set foot upon the Mun. We came in peace for all Kerbal kind. Now, with Valentina in the command module and Jebediah piloting the lander, the two spacecraft prepare to meet up. Jebediah carefully fires his RCS thrusters and maneuvers the capsule in for the final docking procedure. And they've done it. The lander has safely reconnected with the capsule. Now Jebediah and Bob must transfer all of the Munner samples that they've collected and themselves over to the capsule. From here, they undock with the MEM and prepare to make their burn back to Kerbin. Before returning to Kerbin, the Kerbinauts made one final television broadcast, in which Valentina said, The Sarnus 5 rocket, which put us into orbit, is an incredibly complicated piece of machinery, and every piece of which worked flawlessly. We have always had confidence that this equipment would work properly. All this is possible only through the blood, sweat, and tears of a number of Kerbals. All you see is the three of us, but beneath the surface are thousands and thousands of others, and to all of those, I would like to say, thank you very much. Bob added, this has been far more than three Kerbals on a mission to the Mun, more still than the efforts of a government and industry team, more even than the efforts of one nation. We feel that this stands as a symbol of the insatiable curiosity of all Kerbal kind to explore the unknown. Personally, and reflecting on the events of the past several days, a verse comes to mind. When I consider the heavens, 
the work of thy fingers, the mun and the stars, which thou hast ordained? What is Kerbal, that thou art mindful of him? Jebediah concluded by saying, The responsibility for this flight lies first with history, and with the giants of science who have preceded this effort, next with the Kerbals, who have, through their will, indicated their desire, next with the administration and their Congress for implementing that will, and then with the agency and industry teams that build our spacecraft, the Sarnas, the Columbia, the Eagle, the spacesuits and backpacks that was our small spacecraft on our mission. We would like to give a special thanks to all those Kerbals who built the spacecraft and who did the construction, design, test, and put their hearts and all their abilities into those crafts. To those Kerbals tonight, we give a special thank you. And to all the other Kerbals that are listening and watching tonight, crack and bless you. Good night from Kerbala 11. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the original four. I will see you next time.